from the YBA Phoenix Fitness 24-7 Basketball Facility in Rockland, California. It's About That Life Podcast with your host, Coach C. Collins and Coach MJ. It's start three, two, one, let's go. Hey, welcome to About That Life Podcast. I'm your host, Coach C. Collins. Coach MJ is not here for this episode, so it's just me. But again, thank you for those guys who've been uh, supporting from day one, who've been doing their thing, who've been, you know, um, on the Patreon, uh, my sponsors, Dr. Dish, um, uh, Hardwood Palace, everybody, uh, Courtside, uh, West Coast Takeover. Thank you guys again for tuning in, for listening, whether you're checking me out on YouTube, uh, live on Twitch. I know Joe, Joe puts us on Twitch sometimes, or if you listen to us on any audio platform, it's much appreciated. Uh, you guys know the deal on About That Life podcast. We talk a little bit of life, a little bit of politics, but mainly towards AAU basketball and the culture of a hoop and how to progress and how to get better at it. So, again, if you're tuning in, if this is your first time listening, welcome. If this is your first time checking it out, uh, appreciate you you know, taking the time to listen. It's, 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 uh, it's always a process, and we're always trying to – make it better and better and, and get people out there learning how the game works and what to do and what not to do, you know, especially in this AU world where it's getting crazier and crazier and crazier. I just try to get my insight and tips for those who are willing to listen. And I love bringing in people and guests who, um, who've walked this line and, and walked this path. So, you know, uh, appreciate you checking, checking me out. Also, feel free, hit the subscribe and like button. It obviously helps with the algorithm right now. You know, we're at like 280 or something like that, trying to get to 300. Like I said, it's a small goal, but it's my goal. But for sure, on the audio side, we're growing, but I want to grow on this YouTube side. So appreciate you if you can help me out. If not, no worries. Just check out the information. Hopefully it helps you out. With all that being said, I want to get to my guests. I am very fortunate enough to, to have met this brother um, at Harwood Palace and, and he's an official and his, his background, his resume is, uh, uh, very cool, very extensive. He, he played the game at the highest level. He won an NBA championship and we'll get, you know, all into that, but he is someone who, who is really cool vibe, really, really chill brother, uh, you know, talks to everybody real approachable and and I've asked him for a while to be on this show and we've our schedules finally aligned to where he's now could be here for a little while and and drop some knowledge but without further ado I want to introduce my guest Tremaine folks yes yes I'm in the building I appreciate it man <laughs> we, we finally got through yep and uh we are here finally and it's a pleasure to be here I haven't been on this location site in about nine months so yeah brought back some memories coming <laughs> back here hardwood and uh it's, it's been fun so um you know glad to touch up upon the the, the, the location that was paying me a little <laughs> couple dollars to ref some games you know i did it for the kids you know i do yeah. it for both though i got bills too so. right <laughs> exactly man i want to um I want to break down uh, your basketball resume a little bit. Obviously, this is the stuff I found online. You could obviously fill in the gaps for me in between. Um, so we're gonna. I'm gonna talk to you guys mainly what that what's mainly online his NBA career and his um and his collegiate career. So mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. says uh, you're well. You're a small forward uh, drafted out of Fresno State. Um, that yes, correct? that okay. is that, that was correct. I, I was <laughs> okay. a small forward um, slash power, power forward, forward okay. with, with, a, with which was a tweener then, but it's <laughs> it's definitely a position that has assumed a lead role. For example, with Draymond Green. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, that would I, I was a small forward at Cal, and then a power forward at Fresno, then a small forward back in the NBA. So oh, okay. you just got to be prepared to play your role, however you need to do to to survive and, and, and stick at the highest level possible. So they need you to do one thing, just do that one thing really, really well, and um, that's one thing that I could tell kids and young adults, boys, however, just, you know, you don't have to be uh, all around when you get to the league. Mm -hmm. Just have one thing and do it well. Okay. And and specialize in that. Yeah. And you it can take you a long ways. I'm glad you're saying that because I, I preach this as a coach, you know what I mean? And, 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 again, I just made it overseas. I didn't, you know, make it to the league. But it's um 
<laughs> it's funny how you try to oh, preach this to the kids. To well, yeah, thank you. I yeah, appreciate yeah, that's, that. That ain't, that, that's, <laughs> ain't no walk in the park. That's, actually, a lot of those places are just as hard or maybe even tougher in the NBA just having to survive on somebody's soil. Yeah. That's not yours, and you don't own nothing there. <laughs> exactly. But yourself. Okay. So, you, hey, we got, yeah. you know, yeah, I'm sure you so know plenty of cats. Yeah. yeah, we all got some overseas stories. Uh, um, so uh, you played for the Clippers two seasons, correct? Played for the Clippers two seasons. Um, Dunleavy got rid of everybody. Mm-hmm. Brought in some of his people, which is rightfully so. You're the head man in charge. Right. Uh, played two years, had a ball at, at home. Having a chance to play in front of your family. And, yeah. And, and, you're, and you're from L.A., so I Being want from to break LA. that down for my guests, too. Yeah, oh, yeah, it, it was it was a blessing. Didn't have enough tickets for everybody. People just thought I'd automatically <laughs> right. sign for $10 million, but uh, <laughs> it was 10000 obviously. So, no, nah, you know, but, you know, having having that, 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 that pressure was kind of good, too, just know people that wanted to support you. Yeah. So, you know, I tried to spread the tickets evenly, but at the end of the day, it was a, a blessing just to be um, – 10 miles from my house. Yeah, and that's what I would say. I think it's every kid's dream to obviously suit up in the league and play for your hometown. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. I, I'm a I'm a Warriors fan, even when we suck. So, you know, I, I got born and raised in Oakland, so yeah, I would have loved to have a Warriors. Warrior fan. days, but they've they, they made it up significantly yeah, absolutely. over these last uh, 10 years, I would say. And then, so, and then obviously I want to talk about, um, you know, you, you in my opinion, which obviously you'll you could break down more and more later. Um, a big moment. Uh, you played in Detroit, mm-hmm. right, and you won an NBA championship, right, and that was with the uh, the team with. Well, it's funny because you know I remember it obviously more clear than any of these young kids are going to remember it. But mm-hmm. that team in particular was a team you would say didn't have a superstar you know that's what right. was kind of your guys' identity it was a well balanced yeah. group yeah. Yeah. you with uh with Chauncey and Tayshawn and big Rasheed ben. Big Ben yeah. like things like that would you agree that's a pretty accurate deal or I mean because again no, I was. think it was you know I think it was one of the most well balanced teams I I saw you know and um I just curious on you know your your perception of it because no, you lived you, it. <laughs> you, you know you're you're right. You know I think that team ball on the offense and defensive end is kind of a lost arc. You know when it comes to just um, helping each other, talking the mm-hmm. the regular basic fundamentals that it takes to to control a game, and um, you know. The NBA has changed since we won in 2004, yes. so don't right. get this mistake in. <laughs> I might look a little young, like I can still play, but I can't. I just run north and south, no east You're in west good movement. shape, bro. Yeah, what just, you mean, man? I, 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 yeah, I stick to this. I don't go outside my element. So we wrap it up and down. But, you know, that ball was physical, too. Maybe yeah. not like the bad boys of the 80s, but uh, we had a, it was a commitment that you have to have with everybody on the same page. And that that really worked for us, you know. Nobody was bigger than the team. Yeah, Larry Larry was pretty good of uh, emphasizing that he wasn't really my typical my my fo- you know um, my the type of coach I actually wanted to play right. for. But right. when he has that success and you've seen what he's done. And championships, you know, the, the college success. I was mm-hmm. like, let me shut my mouth <laughs> and show them that I'm just gonna come ready to work every right. day. Right. And luckily, you know, I, uh, you know, we didn't know that was gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we definitely didn't. We made some crucial trades within that season, getting Rashid in there and yeah. Mike James and. You know, um, Chucky Atkins had to leave, yeah, and, and, and uh, Bob Sewer, and they were good, very, right. very yeah, good. Yeah, I remember. Hubert Davis was there for the, you know, having. I, I really had relationship with, with these guys because we're on the bench and we're. You and know. like Tayshawn at that time wasn't that like his sophomore year or something like that? Or was, I think he was pretty young. He, he was, was he was, he was a kid, and yeah. that's who I used to sub in. You know, I used to give him a breather. Yeah, Tayshawn. yeah, yeah. And so I used to spell him. I used to just come in and just try to be a high energy player. Right. Absolutely. With limited minutes, your role has to be high energy, make an impact on the game mm-hmm. while you're in there, and then uh, come back to the bench and cheer the other guys <laughs> back on. <laughs> but clearly, it works. So it worked, I mean, man. you got you got a ch- hey, you got a championship out of it. And we we both know there's a yeah. lot of a lot of brothers who 
had great careers who couldn't even get that. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So that yeah. that's clearly something that's fortunate to be a part of. I just think, I mean, that was a obviously would it be in the finals right now. And we'll talk more about that later. But I'm just saying it's it's great to have someone from your perspective kind of sit down and, and kind of break it all down. Right. So yeah. then, yeah. you know, outside of the NBA and and you know did. You, did you want to touch base on maybe your your high school and and collegiate side of things a little bit? Well, I am. Uh, yeah, no problem. Mm-hmm. I am originally from Los Angeles, California. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I've been a California kid forever. Um, I went to Crenshaw. Before that, I went to a couple schools that you might not heard of. Well, one you have Culver City. You haven't, but when we come to Westchester, Westchester, yeah. ninth grade. They, yep. Definitely have a, uh, a rich history in basketball, along with Crenshaw and mm-hmm. Manual Arts, which were you know some city certified high schools that had you know the, uh, the the state and city titles to back it up. Yep. And once I left Westchester, I tried to say you know I tried to move around and see what school would be right for me. Just me wanting to play varsity as a sophomore, knowing yeah, Westchester yeah, yeah. going to you know come back and repeat. Went to a school. Thought I was, I said, you know what, it's time for some elevate the competition. <laughs> you know, I didn't want to sell myself short. And that first school that came up was Crenshaw. Actually, it was the second school. Dorsey was the first school because it was closer to my house. My mom was kind of intimidated sending me to Crenshaw. Right, right, right. Knowing the history. I mean, yeah, during, especially during that time. Yeah, early You know, 90s, that era was, it's, yeah. It's, it, was, it was hectic. So, yeah. uh, just, you know, we got through that, and, you know, that team prior to us coming here Crenshaw they were all seniors so mm-hmm. Crenshaw really had to you know reload yeah and they needed to do it fast not knowing that all of us would be coming from different areas Chris right. Johnson coming from Montclair Prep myself coming from Culver City a couple other guys coming from Westchester mm-hmm. um Compton High LA High so it was just a it was a nucleus that gelled right at the right time. That's cool. And, uh, you know, with a growth spurt from, you know, myself <laughs> didn't, it didn't hurt at the same time. I grew right. a couple of inches from my sophomore to my junior year. And, uh, we came with a team that, uh, happened to, you know, we had some breaks. We yeah. ended up, you know, winning some, we lost some things, but we, we, we gelled at the right time, ended up okay. winning city and state. Uh, and that was, that was special for me, not even knowing what was going to happen in that year. Yeah. And just us fighting through, some you know you know just it, just showing a grit we were very gritty and uh that happened to work for us at the end of the day that's what's and up and we man. we came out with a city and state and everybody played their role and coaches did a great job and we ran a, a, a mean a mean press called <laughs> the rover rover yeah. defense we'll trap right. you on the sidelines we'll just aid you in and making that pass on the sideline and we'll trap you and um that ended up getting a lot of teams rattled, and we used to beat teams by 70 points. So Bro. Um, it, it was an experience that I sometimes think in the stay in the zone, like, you know, that was really nice, right. you know, a really great experience how yeah, we had to bro. just go out and give it your all. And a lot of kids just, you know, these days you don't get to see that as yeah. much. And um, just to see that and wanting to see that more these days from kids, you know, Go until you get tired, get get your break and come back in. Right. You know, don't think that you have to save yourself, um, you know, for the fourth and third quarter. If you feel you got to save yourself to get in shape, you know, work out and uh, be able to see. We, we ran offense and defense. You would, the ball would change so quick. So right. you had to be in shape. We used to run the beaches in the sand. So I know in Saki we don't have no sand, but that's not <laughs> a, that's not an excuse. It's enough. It's enough stadiums up here. Sac, right. Sac City, you yeah, know, yeah. Sac City. Roll run these stairs, man. <laughs> go go get your legs right, man. Do sit on the wall at the house and do some squats, right. you know. It's no, a lot of no things. No excuse. Right, no excuse. There's a lot of things you can do without anybody looking at you. That's where the real true winners are made of. Do stuff when nobody's watching. I love that, man. <laughs> so then I wanted to talk about your experience so of course okay so update you guys as well he's an official now like we alluded to earlier a a referee and you know i want his perspective for sure on that because there's been a lot of just crazy stories with officials as of late especially the past few months i've seen a lot of stories i'm sure you might have heard and seen some yourself um so we'll get into that more but you know from your lens of uh, I mean, I'm assuming you played AAU basketball at some point or, you know, right? Yeah, of course. So from playing it, being around it, 
and now officiating it, you know, when you do, because, you know, I know for you, man, you mainly want to get to that collegiate side and beyond, right? But I'm just saying, what, what do you see? What is your – like, what would you take the pros and the cons of AAU basketball as it currently sits, if if you had to assess it? Well, I mean, I've been a coach, been a ref, been a parent, and every every position can be stressful. Um, the parents – I feel they make it more stressful by putting themselves into it so much. You mm-hmm. know, you have to let the kids grow. And it might have to be at a time where, hey, these AAU tournaments are just for the players and coaches just to, <laughs> just to get a wake-up call from some parents that yeah. uh, just overemphasize, like, who's in charge at the end of the day. Okay. And uh, But, you know, I don't want to – take away from the parents that are good There's right some great right parents right yeah. out there who are yes. very supportive i want to say well, if you Gosh, have to, if because I, I talk about on the show too i do believe it's more good parents than yeah, bad but it's it just is. it's just the bad ones are the loudest right you <laughs> that kill it off for everybody else but so i, I don't want to um disregard the great parents that make these tournaments fun you know yeah. um, making sure the kids are well eight they getting the proper rest and they're you know they're being the parents that the, the kids want to see and not only the kids they the, the, the coaches want to see and the refs right so it makes our jobs easier yeah. too and uh being a ref has been a very interesting journey for mm-hmm. for me but it's it's been fun too. Good. Not Good. knowing everything that's going to happen yeah. you know if it's only my third year i'm looking at elevating the college yeah uh, this year, I'll be going to some more college camps down in L.A. and mm-hmm. Vegas and seeing what, what uh, the future has to offer. Okay. Uh, it's, it's definitely something that I didn't think about doing. <laughs> Somebody would say, hey, Trey, you think about reffing when you get out of from uh, playing professional ball? Would have looked at him like, like right, on, like, yeah, you know, right. Knock it off, <laughs> it, no, no zebra suits <laughs> and all that for me. But right. Um, you look down the road, and I'm wearing it, and I'm wearing it great with grace and and happy. And, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, you have a great I'm, attitude, bro. Yeah, you I, really I, do. I love it, just the contact that the impact I can have on kids, coaches, and parents. You know, some of these, you know, people just know me from just seeing me on TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now it's like I'm here, and a lot of stories is you know what you can't talk to a lot of NBA players, ex NBA. They're yeah, just stuck right. up. Yeah. And I always heard that, and I always made that a point to be the opposite of that. I'm always going to be approachable. You always can talk to me. Um, I definitely vouch for you on that because you know, I mean, look, look, look yeah, where we're here. It's going to take some time for me because I'm, you know, I'm, <laughs> yeah. sometimes I'm everywhere and I'm still adjusting uh, and, and and trying to, you know, cross my uh, T's and dot my I's. Yeah, you know, so um, I, I'm I'm a work in progress and. This is a craft that I'm I'm trying to top off and see what level I can reach. It would be great whatever level I top at off, you know, I, I I'll top at top off at it. Yeah. At, but yeah. it was it the ride and the journey have been great. And that's something that's definitely will have a uh a, a forever lasting memory with me. Nice. It's having that um that that journey, that goal. And that grit to keep going to see where does this end? Yeah, you know. So, but great relationships that happen on the way, on on the way to to where my journey is supposed to end, which is going to be the top. We're not <laughs> we're not going to settle for nothing less. We we reaching for the top. I feel you, brother. Well, then tell me this. Um, I want to circle back to to the M, to your NBA career mm-hmm. and your road to that championship. Um, obviously. Like I said, there's just not a lot of people you get to sit down and talk to and say, hey, what was it like? What was that road like? Like, you know, the practicing, the 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 ups, the downs, the, the you know, the the intensity of it, the fun of it, right? Mm-hmm. The, the travel of it, you know. Um, if you had to summarize it as much as you could, um, obviously, you I'm sure you could say a lot about it. But if you had to summarize, I mean, what was, what is your overall take and experience of getting an NBA championship, like, because because a lot of my listeners are kids, right? Mm-hmm. Aspiring athletes, things like that, and they and of course they they want to know like what was that like? What did that feel like? What did you know? What I'm saying so, just 
curious on on what you have to reflect on that. Winning a championship period is a blessing. And I, I had that feeling in high school, winning two cities and mm-hmm. two states, and um, that moment was was memorable forever. It's cherishable. And when you get in the NBA, and we, even winning that championship, it, you know, any championship you win, especially, yeah, especially absolutely. the NBA championship, but what's more important is how you got there. Yes. You know, for me, um, you know, being a second round pick, that should have been a first round pick getting suspended from school, from Cal, you know, having to sit out 14 games mm-hmm. and having to leave in Fresno state. And I know if I should have went to the NBA or not, mm-hmm. and uh, going to Fresno state sitting out a year yeah. and, you know, having these, this, these, this uh, documentary done on us that put a dark cloud over us. And it's just, it was just, Problems, right, problems, right. problems on my way to a championship. Then you think about when you win, it, win a championship, then you rewind. It's like, you think about everything it took to get there. Right. And that's where I wrote, that's why I wrote this book. You know, yeah, I was going to talk about that too. From yeah. the Shaw to the Chip. And I was just waiting to do interviews so I can have something to, you know, this different because I said I was going to yeah, be doing yeah, this. Yeah, but of course. once I do in the summer when it kicks off, you know, I will be promoting that more mm-hmm. for, you know, it's a good story for every level, every age, mm-hmm. you know, junior high, high school, college. And for people that's trying to find themselves after, you know, yeah. after their professional career, um, you know, it was tough for me because I've tore both of my key leagues. And Ouch. After one, I was I ready to give one. up. Okay, well, you're in the same boat, man. We're in the same line. You're right, you know, right, definitely right. can share that because, you know. <laughs> It's the unknown is seeing how far would your body give you enough to try to re you know get a hundred percent. It's never going to be a hundred percent, but all you could do is to try to see what level you know you mm-hmm. the highest level you could take it. And for me, it definitely was a um, a journey for that. Yeah. Coming back yeah. off one, you're young. It's cool. Your second one, man. Night night. <laughs> so you know, I got in the league with having torn a had tore one, you know, before. Yeah. Um, but I I definitely changed the way I ate. Mm-hmm. You know, I changed a lot of other things so I could last a little longer. And it's funny how I played those four years in the league, and then that fifth year I might have tore my. So it was it was a time where I was really healthy in the league and mm-hmm. having fun, and things were just working. But I committed myself too to try to. Uh, Make sure that you know I gave myself the best chance possible to survive in that in that league. You know, I was one of the first players uh, in the D in the well, we was the MBDL back the, right, in the day, right, the right. D League, yeah, but yeah. now it's the G League. You know, yeah. it's a money grab, Gatorade. <laughs> Go ahead, and get a piece of the action too. You know? They don't so, know about that. Yeah, yeah exactly. So it, it was it's, it was it's been a journey for that. You know, thinking somebody told me once I signed with Cal, would I ever be playing in a D League? I'm like, yeah. what? I'm, right. I'm gonna be a lottery pick. <laughs> so you know, you want to think like that, but you also have to keep facing. Know that your journey it will change and you know just like that okay and you have to it's all about how you respond mm-hmm. you're going to go through a lot of stuff you know that yeah of course playing ball yourself yeah, yeah, yeah of course it's just all about how you respond to the adversity yep. and man i'm telling you i had enough adversity for me to <laughs> to laugh and then cry it all uh, to, to cry but laugh it all off once you get to your destination that's you know some things out there we all gonna have those moments but exactly when you can uh, succumb to you, when you can just go about the pressure and say, "Hey, this is what I made. Uh, this I can. I'm built for this." Mm-hmm. Things just uh, you want that challenge to to get you know get going a little bit, like get that, that momentum man. going. You I like know? that. So all right, well, good. I'm, um, well, let's. Well, we talk. Well, let me Come slow me down my understand. my thoughts, but no. Um, I really think it's cool, your journey overall, man, just getting to know you and, and, and how, I say your overall attitude, just like what you alluded to, like, because I, cause I know guys, like, I am I have friends of mine who, who played in the league and stuff like that, like Robert Swift's a good friend of mine, and, and uh, so, someone I went to high school, he won a ring with the Celtics, um, Leon Poe. Oh, yeah, um, Cal. Yeah, you know, I'm going to know everybody yeah, that yeah. went to Cal. And, he, and he's, you know, he's younger than me, a couple years younger, but, you know, he's yeah. he's nice in Boston moves. working for the Celtics right now and stuff, but it's oh, like, it's um, yeah. but, you know, yeah, the general, I've definitely talked to parents who's kind of alluded to what you said, where it's like trying to talk to an NBA guy. It's like they're very, 
it can be very difficult, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and I try to I try to tell parents both sides of it, right? I said, well, some of these guys, you know, like for instance, uh, Pedro Stjakovic, when he would come up here because his son goes to school out here, he goes right. to Jesuit, and sometimes he would play a hardwood. It's like you got to keep in mind when this dude walks in the gym, a million people want to either take his photo or ask him a question. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, and, that, it, it could be a little it's, overwhelming. It's overwhelming. And he's a little different, too. Yeah, you yeah, know, he's yeah. a sack legend when it comes to the Kings. Exactly. They're at their best. You yeah. know, we played them a couple of times. I was with the Clippers, of course. Right. So, yeah, you definitely understand that. So, I'm like that different type of, you know, that small, rare percentage where, you know, yeah, I was a, you know, a high school mm-hmm. Southern Cali legend, but then came up to Cal. So a lot of people know, then left to Fresno. So right. they see, then they don't. And then they see, they're like, <laughs> he looks like KG. <laughs> he looks like this guy. Right, right. Somebody told me, man, you look like, uh, what's the guy from Milwaukee? Porter, Cl- what's his name? Oh, um, uh, uh, Porter, uh, Porter, uh, Porter, uh, Porter, I know yeah, you're talking I, about, I, though, yeah. I, I said, oh, wait, wow. I, yeah, give me another one, man. So right. I've never, I, I've never uh, known what to expect when it comes to people and seeing how they you know because i had that face that look and i look like a hooper yeah you do figure you got i mean you got the, I, the hooper look, the look. Size, I, I say Tr- tremaine folks and oh cow so right. a lot of people remember me from cal not fresno right uh fresno is just a small school in central california that was uh coached by jerry tarkany and yes, his alma yep, mater so if yep. you know jerry he won the championship with unlv mm-hmm in the early 90s, I believe it was 90 or 91. Yeah, so. yeah. And he created the Amoeba defense yep, and all that amoeba, stuff. Yeah, Amoeba, there you yeah, go. Yeah, all he used that to stuff. run that, did bam. <laughs> I, um, well, so I wanted to talk to you about some with the new way of college and just your thoughts on it. Because obviously we went to college at a time when you weren't making money like that. And now these athletes now with the NIL deal um, – where basically they can make money, right? Mm-hmm. College athletes can make money. And you have the transfer portal, which, you know, again, it's just a whole new animal that they're trying to maneuver and figure out. Ha- you got any thoughts or any, like, opinions on any of that stuff? Well, just for the kids that uh, that's – take advantage of this. We didn't yeah. have we didn't have any of we this. We have this none trans- of this. <laughs> I, 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 went, I paid the price for both. You mm-hmm. want a transfer, I had to sit out a year. Now you can be eligible and transfer, be eligible that following year. Yep. Um, you know, not us not getting paid. I, you know, I had to go outside – my my realm of you know uh, people to get paid yeah uh, and, and be taken care of which hey it wasn't the, the best decision but you see these decisions that come back to help people the kids later on in the future so i paid the price was suspended 14 games but both of those situations can you can clearly see had an effect on me when mm-hmm. i was in college so it's good to see get these kids some money you make enough off of them so yeah um we're not saying get them millions but you do separate who's bringing in the you know who is the most marketable on the team on down so yeah you know, you can't be giving the last man on the bench the same as your, you know, true. No re- doubt about you that. You know, your number one recruit. So, <laughs> you know, they definitely it's still some things that need to be figured out. But at least off top, you know, reward these kids for what they they bring to the university. Yeah. And uh, that right there is fair. And you got to give um, Ed O'Bannon a lot of credit. Ed O'Bannon was the one who actually brought up this. Yeah, um, right. situation. He's a Pac-10. Well, we're gonna say Pac-12 um, uh, um, partner of mine. <laughs> he rivals and they won Clash that championship. That, yep, yeah, absolutely, so, man. So yeah, shout out to Ed. You know they won a championship and they and UCLA definitely got millions and millions from them winning. And I know that at the end of the day, he saw once he was out the league and he saw his face still on the cover of. These two Ks, these caught the all yeah, these yeah, games. Yeah, I remember that, all that. Yeah, they did like, the whole on, thing on man. that. Something's got to change, or let me bring it up and see if it'll change in the future. Not yeah. knowing that 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 will have as much impact as it as it did as it does now. When he said it, you never would think that it would come to this now. Because yeah. you know, it's still just kind of up in the air. Yeah, she get paid, but now they're actually going to get paid. Yeah, they get to. That's a blessing. So big ups. Uh, to everybody for the NCAA is kind of allowing that to happen. Yeah, so, you, nah, know. you got, um, I mean, you got some kids making some major money and as they should, like, like you they said, as it. they should, because it, let's <laughs> NCAA is, uh, 
a very interesting uh, business. <laughs> yeah, you never know what you're going to get <laughs> right. with them. So um, right now, they're, they're at least listening. Yeah, so then um, before we get into some of the other hot takes and everything like that, you know, you're when you, like you said, in the, when you were in the league, you you decided to focus and change your lifestyle. I mean, even prior to those things and, you know, in high school and college, I mean, let's be real. You got to get some genetics on your side, right? We're tall, like you got, you know, have some natural athleticism, but you got to put in work, right? You got to put in work. You got to work on your craft. Like you said, play your role, you know, have kind of the stars align and everything work out. But I'm just saying how, how dedicated were you or once it really clicked for you like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna focus in and make this happen yeah yeah, that's a good question i I really didn't focus in until after college Mm -hmm. when i saw i said i don't want to work right now a regular job i want i just need to focus in and when i when you have a lot of talent yeah sometimes that takes the place of you working out but that only lasts so long absolutely and when I saw that, I said, okay. And I, at the same time, you got to see, I stayed in school four years from transferring mm-hmm. and having to sit out and everybody's passing me up. And yeah. everybody's in their second, third year and the NBA ain't ready to re-up. And right. I'm over here just trying to, you know, scrape the bottom of professional sports period. Right. You know, basketball trying to get a, a job period, yeah. you know. So um, that was a reality check. And then I, you know, I definitely had to tell myself, hey, some things that have to change. You know, uh, seeing guys re up for contracts before you even get in there was definitely a humbling, ex- a humbling experience. Um, but I would tell kids just pick your friends wisely, and I'm not saying you have to, you know, go out and handpick anybody, but choose people that are doing the same thing as you that won't throw you off from going to work out and say, Oh, I want to do this. Oh, Trey, come here with me real right, quick. Right. You want friends that's going to push you to the gym. You want friends that's going to say, Hey, Trey, um, Hey, Hey John, Hey Steve, Hey, finish this, you know, and then, you know, we can do this. You right. want people to commit to what you're doing. If, and if, um, if they're going to be committed to you, then don't let them go neither. <laughs> <laughs> you exactly, don't want to let the good ones go, but you definitely want to pe- put people in their place so they know, you know, what level of seriousness you're 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 on, and they can uh, and it won't be a problem, you know. And people are gonna surprise you and say, "Hey, let's go, uh, let's go work out and lunch on me." When they see, you know, your focus, you know, other people will tend to gravitate towards you to help you out instead yeah. of kind of not, not being a, a distraction or, you know, it would, you know, but people, uh, people have other stuff to do. Yeah, so yeah, you just no want doubt. people that's kind of doing the same thing or want to help you push you to your goals. I like that. I and like uh, that, that, that would be my advice for the, 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 the high schoolers right now. Mm-hmm. Definitely junior high, and high school, because of the influence is big right now. Yeah. And I'm like, man, you know, parents, we definitely got to stay on their kids, but we we not around them 24 seven. So the influence is a lot of times outside our our, our doors, our right. home, you know. Yeah, so uh, we yeah. definitely want them to be in the same. Uh, you definitely want them with kids uh, that's on the same level, right? I like that. He's on fire. I like that, man. Oh, so <laughs> got the little, the little scratch <laughs> of here, course, huh? man. I like that. I like that. I, um. Well, then. Uh, last, well, I guess, like I said, last thing I, and I did want to allude and talk to about that more before we move on to everything else was, uh, your book, you know, you, you, like you said, you came up with a book. Uh, I saw you just recently put it online. Right. Um, so yep, I just, yep. you know, if you wanted to put it out there and let people know about it, let them check it out. I wanted you to talk about it or, you know, just say, Hey, here's my book. Check it out if you want. Well, and, well, look, that's, I'm, I'm glad you said, um, thank you for that. The book, y'all, is this, is we, are we just audio or are we recording? Too? We recording we, this, we recording? this all, oh, yeah, yeah. We been recording this whole time? Yeah, we recording, uh, I would have been, if I would have been interviewing like this, <laughs> yeah, man, from, from the shaw to the chip. We recording no. the whole time, bro. Oh, uh, it's all good, from the shaw to the chip, man. <laughs> so, from the shaw to the chip, it's the, from Crenshaw to the championship, not only with Crenshaw, but with Detroit, mm-hmm. you know, t- uh, tapping out at the NBA at the highest level. Yeah. 
you know, that's a story. You know, I had this, the crazy part about this is, you know, I got a shirt too for you too that I got to press up, but I got it all. So oh, I appreciate size. that, man. I appreciate yeah, it. I got you. Um, one thing about this story was I wrote this book 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. No computer, just no pad, right, right. pen and no pad. Yeah, yeah, had yeah. about, had about, um, fold binders had about four of them just yeah, yeah, just yeah 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 took it to la had a box with my videotapes and everything make a long story short it got stolen out the car oh damn i lost lost energy to just yeah, you know, yeah somebody steals tough. a book you're not gonna be like oh no problem let yeah, me just yeah, come yeah. right i'll just write a whole <laughs> yeah, well, one tomorrow and that's, and that's your life man like that, that's yeah. you're reflecting on your life yeah, yeah that's, he, he took that that took a lot out of me and after that i focused on other things but God is good. He came full circle around. And one thing that people will, you'll tap into your inner self time sometimes at your, you know, your lowest point. Mm -hmm. I would say during that pandemic, when um, you're feeling like you're confi confined to spaces and you can't leave. Yeah. And, you know, they tell you stay in the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 you don't, you're not in a mansion no more. So you in a little two, three bedroom apartment. Yeah, right, right. Things can get small, you know, for a guy in my staff, right, right, six. Right. I'm like, oh man. So I'm, you know, you only can go outside so many times and walk around the block. And, and I say, you know, I need to put my mind at ease on something that I need to let off my chest. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? Let me tell this story again. I'm always telling people about the Kobe Bryant story. They want to know about this and that yeah. Detroit. They want to know about Chauncey. If, if I'm in Detroit, if I'm in with the Clippers, they want to know about <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lamar Odom. Right. Right. Of course. Elton Brand. So a lot of players, not only me, I've been around a lot of people that other people want to know. Yeah, about. of course. Yeah. So I said, why not kill two birds with one stone? So I wrote this book. It'll be out this weekend. Nice. If you want to get some more detail, Tap in to my IG at Trey folks. And I, and I will have links attached to the description on YouTube and on the audio side to his, to his social media and to um, his book and things like that. So, you know, yeah. download it, check him out, check out his journey. You guys will all, you'll get all that information. Yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll take care of you. You know, <laughs> you know you're on point, baby. <laughs> so definitely it's, it's been a blessing. And once I promote this book, mm-hmm. I'm really going to get into the other book that I wrote, which okay. is called More Than a Champion. Mm -hmm. That hits the mental awareness uh, sector of athletes, and especially for retired basketball athletes such as myself that hit a sometimes hit a brick wall, yeah. you know, and have to find an outlet for them to be to survive and, yeah. and, and be able to have an impact. You yeah. know, a lot of players don't have impacts. Uh, after they leave the game you're right and a lot of stress and mental um you know is they're just not in a good place people forget we're human sometimes man. right you they, know what i mean they they, exactly. they definitely forget uh yes that we got you know we got bills and shit we got kids we got all we got that. life it's just uh, like everybody else you know what i'm saying all of that yeah exactly you hit it right on the nail so um for me that didn't make a lot of money i had to adjust you know with life after basketball mm -hmm. And had to go go back to school somewhat, and you know, not and it, well, I had to finish out my yeah, credits. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, a person that's changed degrees, you know, I mean, uh, um, I've changed majors, yeah, uh, two, three times. So, you know, it's been a journey, uh, but I'm here full circle to give what I know and my knowledge out uh, to some to the game that once brought me a lot of success. Mm -hmm. And when it doesn't bring you a lot of success, you kind of push the game away and don't want to have nothing to do with it. And that's typical for an average athlete sometimes when they don't get the career that they wanted. I right. feel like that too. Sometimes you're mad at the world, but um, you have to spend some time by yourself and kind of meditate and, and kind of try to and find yourself and yeah. see what you really want to be, uh, position you want to be put in or find yourself like in. That. And uh, it was a blessing that I did. It wasn't anything that I said I was always going to ref, but now I see my impact and what I can have on this game in a different way that I ever could imagine being yeah. away from the game and dribbling the ball. And this is something that I said, hey, I'm going to try to work this to the wheels fall off. Nice. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys check that out. Like I said, links for that will be in description. And 
Well, I want to move on to the hot takes because we got some good, fun stuff to talk about and react to. So definitely want you guys to stay tuned for that one. So got hot takes. The first one I want to talk about, uh, a lot of people might uh, know, obviously, well, obviously, hopefully everyone knows. It's the finals going on right now. It's the Warriors, yeah, Boston. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, Draymond has been a very interesting character this whole playoffs and, and finals. And... Yes, I'm not mad at it. You know what I mean? He's he's yeah, yeah. holding on to his, his his 15 minutes and he's making it happen. You know, the mm-hmm. the thing I wanted to talk to you about, because I, you know, I you, you've played in the game and, and at those levels. And he, you know, he I don't know if you saw when he said this take, but, you know, he talked about the 80s and the 90s era and, you know, how it's always compared. And I think. You got. I think your era is a very interesting era because the early two thousands was kind of that in between transition era. You know what I mean. So I think your perspective's very unique in that regard because the eighties was its own thing. We know that. You know, there was the Bird, the Showtime Lakers, all this. At the nineties, Jordan. Right. It just was Jordan. And then you go to the early two thousands, Shaq and Kobe era. You know, what I mean, you you were in the and that's when. You know, AI and, you know, arguably one of the best draft classes and all, all that, all those fun barbershop talks. But, you know, he said, he said, um, you know, everybody says like, oh, we couldn't play in the 80s and 90s because of the physicality. And then his, you know, he said, you know, you weren't the one that was going to knock me out. Like, you know, <laughs> it's like that, it's someone else was going to knock me out. It wasn't going to be you. And then, of course, he said, well, you can't play in our era because you have to be more skilled. You know, obviously. Stephen Curry has changed the game. The three-point shooting, there's yeah, so there's many analytics. Many it, we just know the game is so different. We know this. Um, I was curious, your thoughts on kind of all that, the errors and the comparing the errors and all the talk and all that stuff. What What do you see? Um, This era is uh, the most interesting era. Of course, as time goes, things get more and more interesting. I thought our era kind of uh, was a um a era that made we we made an era of being ourselves and a uh, change in the culture. We changed the culture and AI was a big part of that. Yes. When I say culture to dress codes and tattoos. Yes. <laughs> our say, era was more sure. of that, you know, hardcore, just rock with it type of just style. And, you know, and that's, you know, had to come to an end when David Stern said, we got to start dressing. You guys got to start dressing the part. And I, I, I understood that because, you know, we were taking that generation was kind of taking the league by storm. Yeah. And a lot of old players didn't kind of feel that, you know, you know, um, how that transition was was happening so fast. So, um, you know, I'm like, hey, I'm with it, too. So I started getting tattoos when I said, <laughs> once I, must, I said, I make right. the second year, I'm going to get them right with AI. So AI right. inspired me. You know, I said, but let me make sure I'm, I got a guaranteed contract before all these tattoos because everybody didn't have tattoos at that time in the NBA. So I was just loving tattoos. And just, you know, that was an NBA thing right there was just – trying to be noticeable with your physical appearance and look. Uh, these days, it's the game has changed, you know, um, very stylish kids, very talented kids. Yes. The game is changing with bringing the overseas talent in. Uh, they're bringing more and more overseas talent, which doesn't give a lot of guys that have put in that college work the best opportunity, but if they're going to start adding teams to the G league and getting um, teams with guys from the United States opportunities, I'm definitely with it. Uh, Shoot for all I, for all I I would like to see another uh, league. I would like to see another league out in the States. Um, You know, it's a lot of basketballs at its highest uh, right, right now for, you know, the point for people to elevate the game is making m- m- billions of dollars. Uh, the market is crazy right now. You're right. For for basketball. And, um, you know, you uh, we've seen guys like, you know, we've seen the JBL. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, with, yeah. With, but, that was, just, but that was that was for the boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was just for him. But I, if you could see that started that quick, remember that, have you actually put yeah. a real – 
league together and be solid and guys can at least make 50,000. Yeah. Nothing. You know, I was in the G League. I was getting paid. It was a 12, 12, 15, 18. So you were player level C, you're getting 12, B, 15, A, 18. I mean, mm-hmm. you couldn't even get yourself an apartment. Yeah, there. yeah. That's oh, yeah. You still had to work a job. Left. Yeah. yeah. And went you had to leave. Yeah. If you knew you weren't team wasn't going to playoffs, your thing was to go overseas. You yeah. Know, go to Philippines, go to China, mm-hmm. Japan, and get some money. So um, I just like to see them just put some effort like they do in the NBA to, to other aspects of the game and getting it more um, global away from the NBA. Just give mm-hmm. some other opportunities for these guys that can't go overseas yeah. neither. Just, I just like to see expand. Another league would be nice. Yeah, if, if we see the big three for yeah. five years. Yeah, Come on, yeah. you tell me you can't start another league. I agree with that. If we give them big three, all oh, this pub, and it's just a big three. These guys are 50 years old. They my age. and yeah. 40 years old. I need a ref in that league, matter of <laughs> fact. Let me call my my my, my publicist, and, you know. But anyway, yeah, I'd no, I I like, like to that. see that. I would like to see them expand. And give some of these guys some opportunities. So it was funny. Uh, Joe just texted me. Um, funny enough, uh, your championship uh, was uh, today. That's what he said. He just texted me. He, uh, Ball is life. Uh, this was your team. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> just real life. Wow, that was a that was a year ago today. Huh? Yep. Small, <laughs> eighteen wow. years. That's funny, man. I didn't even realize that. But yeah, it was today. Wow. Eighteen years ago. To eighteen years. Eighteen years ago yeah, today. Yeah, where that time flies. Yep. <laughs> you guys beat the Lakers super team. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, came up on the uh, championship ring that year and. Not nice, even knowing man. that broke up the Lakers and the rest is history. Yeah, and, uh, man, that's rest crazy. Rest in peace, Kobe. I love him. He was one <laughs> of the only cats that yeah, actually um, came up to me after the game, you know, um, and said, "Congratulations, you finally made it." You yeah. know, he's got some history with you know um, having my jersey, you know, which is part of the story when mm-hmm. he was. Uh, played on Moesha, he yeah. was the character. I remember High that. Tower and yeah. Crenshaw. Yeah. With that forty four, which was my number, and you know, <laughs> so he has some tie ins, and you know, and and you know, knew about the Crenshaw history, and for him to actually come up to me after a game in Bakersfield, Lakers and Clippers always play their preseason games yeah. in Bakersfield, yeah. And for him to, you know, I'm talking to moms and him to come up to me and say, Congratula- hey, congratulations, congratulations, you finally <laughs> made it. You know, I'm like, oh, thanks, Kobe. That's I great, appreciate man. it. Like, keep that's, working. Yep. And I'm the older one. Kobe's the youngest, <laughs> but he's been already there. Right, right. That's true, uh, man. It's 96, and this was in two, oh, 2002. Kobe already been in the league six years. Yeah, man. So. Uh, he he was a he was a youngster in age, but uh, uh he 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 was a gangster old man <laughs> with, when he was on that court. So, I, hey, we all know that. Props brother. and uh, you know much love to uh, Mamba man. Of course, yes, rest sir. in peace always. I um well, I want to talk about uh you know the NBA as, right now with the Warriors in Boston. That series is obviously um. I th- I feel that this playoffs and this finals has actually been a good good year of basketball. You know what I mean? It hasn't been – of course, it's been some lopsided games and things like that, but overall it's just had a good atmosphere and feel. You know what I'm saying? And um, do you have – I mean, for you, it's always funny when I – Especially with uh, NBA players, because you guys know it. But do you have a favorite team? Do you are you a Laker fan? Or are you still Clippers fans that you uh, play for? Them? Do you, are you just kind of a player fan at no, this that's, point? That's pretty much. You know, I'm always going to root for my California teams. Okay. Um, of course, I'm gonna go with Detroit, the Clippers. Right. You know, I didn't play with Indiana long enough for me to just <laughs> ride with them like like that. But I am a Cali Cali boy, so I'm always going to go for the Kings, All the right. Lakers if they in the playoffs. Okay. Um, uh, definitely, the, you know, Warriors, Clippers. Nice. Um, but I just like to see good basketball. And you asked me, I want all the playoff games to go seven games. Yeah, I see right. I want to go. I want to go three, three, and the last man standing wins. Yeah. Just being in that situation and seeing it all. I want the fans to get their full money's worth too. You know, I want it to go all the way to the end. Let right. everybody rest after the season is <laughs> over. But this is good basketball. Um. You know, it's definitely exciting to see some of this magic happen out there, you know, with these uh, these group of guys. Yeah. And uh, seeing some guys represent where you once stepped on the same floor as, you know, they did with Jalen Green mm-hmm. being the ex-Cal guy. And uh, uh, 
just seeing the growth of players, you know, as far as Tatum. Yeah. You know, it's even good to see uh, uh, Peyton. Yeah, yeah, know, Barry Peyton Jr. Yeah, I'm Gary a, Payton I'm a huge Jr. balling you know. fan of his story and his journey. Right, you know I what love I mean? stories, yeah. and uh, you know, maybe when he see and read my book, it might inspire him to <laughs> do a book because right. I want to know a lot of guys' stories that I don't uh, that I'm interested in. That yeah. you know, you watch, you watch play and say, "Oh, he finally there," just like people tell yeah. me, "He finally there." Well, that finally means there's a story behind yeah, that. Exactly, you know, comes story comes with that. So. Um, I'm not the only story. I know that I'm a inspire a lot of people because it, it once I was inspired, I kept hearing you're always going to hear that talk of what you inspired of because it's it's the energies in the air. So once I say I'm gonna write a book, I'm hearing books here, books there, books <laughs> I read this, right. I read that. So <laughs> the energy's gonna come around. And I like to hear a lot of stories, uh, and I I might have to ask guys that I want, stories I want to hear have to try to. You know, uh, be a all you know help 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 them write that. Right. Know? So that might be a, I might be you know, com- uh, creating the own uh, source of income for myself by getting these other guys to you no, know get these right. stories yeah, out here, man. You're right. They, I want to hear be. a lot of stories, and I'm I might just have to go out and reach and pull them in, and create you know some. Well, you're a part of that brotherhood, so mm-hmm. that helps give you that insight. It's like, you know, that's a huge reason why I created this podcast was simply just mm-hmm. to get people my guest stories out yeah, yeah but also show how basketball is really like a universal language and mm-hmm. on top of that because i'm mainly talking to kids and youth and parents in aau mm-hmm. and the the bulk of aau basketball is honestly a lot of parents and kids that don't know the journey you know what i mean because that's that's what i think is the most important part is the journey yeah and yeah. and because the, the, a lot of people this is how I describe it anyway. A lot of people look at athletics and mainly basketball and mainly say basketball and football. Um, they look at it in a very mountain type of view, and this is what I mean. They're at the bottom of the mountain. Mm-hmm. They see the top. Mm-hmm. They forget there's a mountain. You know what I mean? They mm-hmm. just see the top. They're like, oh, that's going to be me. Yeah. They forget there's a mountain. Whether you go up the mountain slow or whether you go up that fast, it's still a mountain. It's still there. And so that's how I like to – give people stories like yourself because you guys can tell them, you know, give a little bit of insight, like, okay, this was my journey. This is the steps that I took the, the good, the bad, and, and what helped me get there, you know? And yeah, do you need a little bit of luck, a little bit of this right timing things, you know, going your way, put in work, athleticism, speed, blah, 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 blah. The list goes on. There's a bunch of variables, but I just think it's good knowledge for people to know. So yeah, I, I more or less, you know, the superstars, the LeBron James, the Kevin Durant, the uh, Russell Westbrooks, the list goes on and on. The superstars, their stories are always going to be out there, right? Mm-hmm. But those are the the special ones, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, the yeah. truly Kobe yeah. Bryant's, uh, the truly special ones. Um, but everybody has a story, mm-hmm. you know, right? And I just felt, I always felt I wanted, if I had the opportunity, I wanted to provide that platform, you know what I mean? That's good. No, that's very impressive. I give you a lot of props. Big ups to you on that. Uh, and that's part of the uh, the whole process. You know, the the media always wants to know what's going on with the, the, the higher archy guys. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. And they just want to follow them through the good, the bad, and the ugly. There right. are so many stories that are missing. You know, if you look at me, I might have made a million or two, but you look at Delonte West, who's made a lot, so they're going to follow his yeah. ups and downs, and it's why you following all these downs There's so many other players that are on the way up mm-hmm. from coming down, you know, and those are stories that I'm trying to get people out there to listen. You know, I'm just a small percentage. You know, I'm just a story, but it's a lot of guys' story, like, uh, it's similar to mine. I agree. And this is just, um, this would make, the the landing you know from you know adjusting to life after basketball a little you know it'll be a little bit more smoother so um that's what i'm trying to do man i'm just trying to change the narrative a little bit so uh it won't be so much shell shock you know when you know um reality hits and uh and just to have the right people in your corner when it comes down to it so Everything that I've been through, I've been through it twice, three <laughs> times, and forever. So, um, I appreciate that big time. I, 
I wanted to, so I want to do a quick video reaction. Mm -hmm. I have a video from uh, T uh, Y T Sports, which is uh, the Young Turks. Um, they're a, a independent YouTube news channel or whatever. But it's because um, mm -hmm. I wanted to talk, switch gears, and talk about referees being attacked or you know violence against officials and all the fighting and stuff like that. I mean, let's. You know, a couple of things before you saw it. It's like a little quick four minute video, but um, you know, this is more for the audience out there, those listening. You know, most people ain't gonna attack you. <laughs> Let's just keep it real here. It, you, you, for one, you got a great attitude. Two, um, you're six eight brother. It's just again, most people ain't looking to fight six eight brothers. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but we do know parents. There's some dads and just some parents out there that take things way too far. Um, and again, let me also make this disclaimer that we do. I firmly am in this and people who've been watching the show and know the show. I do think that's the minority. That is not the majority of people, but they are out there. Unfortunately, um, I just uh, I I hate to see it. You know what I mean? Like you just hate to see it because it's just turning it's it's making the jobs scarce it's making kind of a huge resentment officials are feeling like you know is this worth it things like that even like officials who've been doing it you know 15 20 years things like that high high quality officials mm -hmm. they're 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 just like completely turned off from you know wanting to deal with youth you know they'll still deal with high school varsity high school co uh, college level and obviously beyond but but we really need, but you know, we really need them more in youth because youth dominates uh, as far as the sheer number. So I wanted you to check out this video, kind of react to it a little bit, give your thoughts on it, and give your perspective. So I'll play it for you real quick. Mm -hmm. So that's the video. Mm -hmm. You're going to see they're talking at first. And then basically this dad starts videotaping this ref and they just, <laughs> it gets from one thing to another. He said something to him. At an AAU game in the state of Indiana, a brawl broke out on the court. It was in Indiana, so I figured he might. It's a women's game, too. Oh, wow. Slams him on the ground. Yeah, that's unfortunate right there. Obviously, they separate him after, after that. After a referee gets taken down UFC style, all combatants are separated. It was a wild scene that we have unfortunately taken in one too many times. Mm -hmm. Brawls breaking out at youth sporting events ticked off parents frustrated referees a feeling of animosity with kids just wanting to compete here's the backstory via local media the altercation occurred at the prime midwest event at the pacers athletic center during a game between baylor basketball and indiana elite baylor trailed 34 12 with 16 seconds left in the first quarter when its coach began arguing with the referee over a call the ref issued a technical foul at which time the coach told her team to pack their bags and leave despite the game being in the first quarter and as you can see the game had just begun with at the time of the slap as it said previously 16 seconds remaining in the opening frame. Meanwhile, as the team decided to leave the floor, the referee continued to make his case with the team as a spectator appeared within feet of the referee, taking video in the referee's face. It's unclear whether the spectator said anything, but the video shows the referee punching the spectator, which prompts a Baylor player to come at the ref throwing punches. Another spectator joins to attack the referee, who is then flipped and lands on the court as the player continues to punch him. It appears to show the man in green allegedly did say something. However, does it warrant this referee acting the way he did in response? Of course not. 
No. Mm-hmm. The man with the cell phone video then body slammed the official on the court, which allowed multiple people, including the player, to get a few more shots in on the ref while he was down before others came to the official's defense and separated the bunch. The event staff removed the involved parties from the remainder of the tournament and will not welcome them back to future events. Management at Pacers Athletic Center said in a statement, we are disappointed that this altercation happened as we strive to provide a great experience for families. The center's statement added that the altercation happened during a third party event company's tournament that was hosted in our building. So yeah, what, 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 what do you think about all this craziness going on with officials and stuff like that? I mean, I'm you know, obviously it's bad. I just think it's all around bad. But, you know, <laughs> there's obviously layers to it. You know, even in that instance, um, a guy videotaping and then the ref slapping him. He hit him first, no doubt. But you could clearly see the dude said something to him. It's just, I don't know. It's just, what, what's what's your take of all this crazy? Uh, it's, it's been a little while ever since the pandemic hit. And, you know, we just got a lot of people stressed out before they even come to the game, so that's no excuse. I'm not going to let that be the main reason and give them an excuse for that. But um, parents, um, you know, have to understand that they got to protect the kids as first before anything, and that's just making sure, and I'm talking about injury, just making sure the game is played the right way, the kids are not talking smack, um, you know, if, if anybody's injury we're injured we are making sure we are um it's safety first and you just the making sure we just have a clean game yeah and stop worrying about the little things that get blown out of proportion to be big things i mean it looks like refs need security sometimes at these places but if this calls for you know um you know whoever has to fund for uh, security at locations then that's what it has to come to yeah. just to make sure things are protected but uh it's unfortunate i've posted things on my page you know and said refs need security and it's not the first it won't be the last time but it can be controlled to a certain extent and that's going to take uh you know uh, people to speak up you know the aau organizations and mm-hmm. um the, the organization is going to have to come together and say, hey, we want this type of game to be ran. We have to do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And uh, that would be good to see some change in the right direction and wanting to protect the kids. Because once the parents and the refs get into it, I mean, you're just leaving the kids open to happen. Well, you don't know yeah. what's going to happen. So yeah. we push them to the side to, to do some – Grown up beef, we too old for that right now, <laughs> and uh, it's getting. We gotta set, put our emotions to the side, and just get back to the regular. Just play a good hard nosed game of basketball, just like when we were playing outside before AU, and yeah. being on a blacktop all day. Yeah. You know, wasn't no parents and no refs. You know, and you just played. You played, and you had to your own. You had to handle your own beef. And, yeah. And it wouldn't get too far out of hand because everybody's just so competitive. You just wanted to win and go home, eat and go to sleep. You know, <laughs> it's different now these days. Uh, hopefully, you know, things can change. I'm always um, optimistic, you know, and seeing some change. And I'm always going to push for, um, you know, um, a, a better situation than what it is right now. So I, I agree with you, man. Like, let me ask you this. Do you do you think when things like that get out of hand, is that a reflection? Because, like, I can only say for myself, I'm, I'm very big on my teams and my parents being a reflection of my organization, you know, things like that with YBA and me, you know, me being director, co-director, whatnot. And, and at this point, people are like, you know, you're the face of YBA, blah, blah, blah. I don't really mm-hmm. worry or get into all that. But I'm just saying, like, when I take my teams to events, I try to make sure my parents understand, like, hey, we, we act in a certain way. You know, yeah, even yeah. if it gets heated and competitive, we don't, you know, don't badger officials. Hey, you can disagree with them or, you know, say, oh, man, that's about, okay. Like, leave it at that. Shut up. But, you know what I mean? Like, I, I really am on my parents and kids to hold themselves in a professional way, right? Because mm-hmm. what I'm thinking is if I'm teaching him this at fourth and fifth grade, when he's in high school about to get hopefully recruited by a college, 
he will have all the necessary skills and know the way to act. And the parents will know the way to act Mm -hmm. to where this kid doesn't compromise his potential opportunity, right? He or she's opportunity. Mm -hmm. Do you think coaches need to take more accountability when their parents or, or these type of things happen before they, especially for the organizations? Yeah. Everybody, uh, if you're grown up, you got to take some type of responsibility. So, uh, it doesn't have to do with one person. Everybody has to, you know, put their two, their two cents in and, you know, um, try to make this thing work. You know, it's just everybody has to uh, have input in a positive way and, you know, bring forth, you know, change for the better. Yeah. Well, then um, what I wanted to talk to you about was if you had any thoughts on this one, because this is always a hot, hot bed topic, um, kids reclassing, right? That's a... It's a huge thing going on right now. You got a lot of kids, you know, um, parents reclassing their kids. I mean, you have, uh, you know, there's there's literally 16 year olds in the seventh grade and stuff at this point. And my whole take, I've been I've been very consistent on this. Hey, teach his own. Everyone has their own journey who I can't tell you what is right or what's wrong. I just think it's a slippery slope. Let me just put it like that, because, you know, um, this is like a scenario I brought up. Uh, your kid is now a 20-year-old sophomore junior, right? And he wants to holler at a 15-year-old freshman, you know, but they're in high school. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I see, you yeah, know what I mean? Like, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's where it gets dangerous, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and and just how the physical bodies, like, when you have these 15-, 16-year-olds playing in seventh grade going against these 13-year-olds, they get legit hurt, a kid, because there's just so much physically bigger and stronger. Of course, you're anomalies where you got some kids who just have man bodies like a LeBron James at, at age 14, 15. But you know, nowadays it's it's so common. It's it's borderline dangerous to me. And I I say, hey, if you got to reclass your kid one year because of academic reasons and because you know maturity reasons and all that, that's fine. I just don't. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I I don't see at the collegiate level all the most dominant players are like these 22 year old reclasses that were held back three times and all that stuff. I just don't see the overall benefit of it. So I just think if you do it, just do it for the right reasons. That's all. So I didn't know if you had any thoughts or anything on that one. Uh, that one's a little bit too slippery for that. I'm going to keep it real um, surface level and say, if you're able to play, um, be eligible you should be eligible in high school uh to your 19 yeah. you know and that's that's it for me in 2021 that's just too too uh, that's just too much of eligibility for that that age um but you know I, I i wouldn't let anybody they shouldn't be able to slip past two years you know um you shouldn't be a ninth and be in 12 12 you know 12th grade age wouldn't be a ninth grade so i would say two years and that's that's about where I would just take it out going too far into it would be to two years for, uh, you know, to reclassify no more than two years, 16 and 18. That's about top of yeah. 14, 16. Yeah. So I won't take it too deep there. I just wouldn't like to see them give too much, uh, you know, uh, leeway to letting people reclassify after two years. Yeah, no, I agree with that, man. It's just um. That's it. Just to me, it's, it can be a slippery slope, but, you know, hey, to each his own. And then my last question for you, there's a lot of AAU programs popping up all over the place at this point. You know, AAU basketball is like everybody jumping on board. You know, I want a team. I want a team. You know, everybody's making teams and stuff like that. Um, do you think AAU basketball is kind of losing its competitive edge? Do you think it's getting so – kind of opened up to where it's borderline becoming wreck because i so there's some teams at some levels i just call it competitive wreck you know what i mean it's 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 um that's what it's becoming because i know again when i played au basketball and i graduated in 2001 right so um you know growing up in oakland and playing at that time it was really competitive and elite and and i'm not saying it's still not because it is it's you got the shoe circuit levels and you got all that great stuff I'm a big proponent of AU basketball. I'm just saying, is it becoming too big? You know what I mean? To where it's hard to distinguish what is the elite and what is just normal 
<laughs> average, you know what I mean? Um, no, you're right. It's it's becoming watered down. Um, everybody and their mama got an AU team now. <laughs> and it makes it looks like, okay, well, it's that easy. Right. And, but it's really um, levels to this. And, you know, the highest level gets put in with the lowest levels and doesn't make any fun anymore. So I like to see them separate this some way, somehow, with teams that are um, – you know, uh, the high level teams have these certain qualifications. Yeah. You know, with all these AU teams, they uh, I see about five levels, division levels of within one age group that really <laughs> breaks down. You know, <laughs> you've I, seen the blowouts, man. Yeah, I know you've it's seen just the not like, fun. yeah, it's, exactly. Um, it's just not a good feeling. It, I, yeah, not for everybody, the coaches, the parents, and the refs. Yeah. You know, we it's. The game gets lethargic, and then you just, you know, it's like watching paint dry yeah. score 70 to 13. And, <laughs> and they, nobody wants to – I yeah, hate games like that, They got to do a better man. job of classifying these teams, or they just won't be able to play outside of their city or region. I mean, well, I would say region, but, you know, it wouldn't make sense for them to go on trips. These got to be high-level trips. And um, Hopefully, AU just won't just be about money and teams that they will, the actual AU organization can come together and mm-hmm. kind of solidify it and have some structure where we don't get all these people flying out and you or your whole family flying out just to see teams win by 80 and lose yeah. by 80. Like, that's not fun. And back in my day, it was very different. Everybody was competitive. And it's just because it's saturated now. It's a lot of teams. It's things are being saturated. So once it's unsaturated a little bit and it dies down, it won't be so hot and they'll have some structure and run in a different way in different regions and sections. Um, It'll get a hold of itself. Everything kind of goes up and down. We still in a pandemic too. Yeah, that's true. Very true. Everybody's still trying to get, you know, grounded and trying, you know, but some people just running with it since it's a pandemic. <laughs> oh, we, well, we want to go too on this. Let's get some people together. So it's a give and take. But um, from my from my pers- pers- perspective, um, I would just like the kids to have some fun without the input of grown ups. You know, and don't overcoach a kid. Stop getting on your kid and being down on the first row when the coach is you, – you're right behind the coach and the team. Right. Let the coach lead coach. Co- yeah, let the coach <laughs> coach. Lead these kids alone. Leave your son and daughter alone. Like, I never got – if I was frustrated my son, i just walk out the gym. Right. You know, hey, man, let me just come because I don't want him to see me like this. Hey, you might think I'm going to the bathroom. Right, some, right, so. right. You got to make these kids and, like, make it think like it's not that serious. So, hopefully, uh, we'll do, you know – you know, some parents might be listening to me now and might yeah. gain some knowledge on that and listen to an NBA champion for one step in every situation <laughs> from a parent, a player, right. a coach, and a ref. You know, that's rare. Uh, that's 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 like that's why I wanted you on the show, right? You're right. Here. So, but we'll do it again, and I can get and I hopefully I can give you an update. And, and you, yeah, and oh I yeah, I can you tell you, that, like, okay, since I last did my first interview, was a lot of things that change for the better or the worse so the, <laughs> the time starts soon as we end it right we'll, and then the next one we'll see if it was any changes uh, made in the right direction oh yeah absolutely so with that being said man i trey man i appreciate you being here brother hey so um, it's been a fun episode man just hearing hearing your story man oh man, man. I appreciate it. It's been great, you know, being on the show. I love it. I'm going to be back here. You know, we'll get some times settled in. we bring a couple people yeah, in. Yeah, one person will sign my camp. And y'all just continue to wish me luck, man. I'm going to try to make this round this weekend <laughs> in L.A. for college ref camp and then come back up here and do some work and then maybe ref some of y'all games and do the substitute. <laughs> it don't stop. Stay blessed. I, I appreciate it. it. No and problem. um Let's let's continue to keep working with these kids, man. It's all about them. Yep, got you. So I want to do my quick shout outs before we get out of here. A uh, big shout out to Chad Johnson. Uh, thank you, brother, for signing up for the Patreon account, man, supporting the show. Also, Chris Johnson and Josiah Johnson, man. Shout out to you guys for uh, supporting the show as well. 
Big a shout out for Drifty J and Marcellus, some two kids I know, man. You guys are doing your thing on the YouTube ball, uh, basketball side, basketball content creators. Coach Tet, shout out to you, man. Uh, we got to talk about the algorithm. That's something we're going to get to, man. Um, Trey, bro, it, it really was great having you here, man. And, you know, please feel free again. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Check us out. Help support the show. If not, and you just got something out of it, I hope it helps you on your journey, whether you uh, checking me out on YouTube or the audio side. Everybody be safe out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I'm on yeah. YouTube too, yeah, man. Yeah. Follow both of yeah, us, yeah, man. Let's exactly. all come together as one, <laughs> baby. Come on. Let's grow. Let's grow. Let's grow. All right, man. Everybody be safe, and we out.